Welcome back to part two in this series on using async await with Cloud Functions for Firebase. So, how do you make use of async await syntax in TypeScript or ECMAScript 2017 to write better Cloud Functions code? Well, in my last video, you learned the basics of async await to work with promises. The code samples there didn't have anything to do with Cloud Functions directly, but today I'll show you how to apply what you learned. If you haven't already watched that video, do it now, because you'll need that information to follow along here. As you know, the async keyword indicates that a function always returns a promise. And inside an async function, you can use the await keyword to pause that function until some other promise becomes fulfilled or rejected and get a hold of its result. You can use this syntax in your Cloud Functions code to work with the promises returned by the Firebase Admin SDK and other APIs you might use. What I'll do today is refactor some existing Cloud Functions code I wrote for my earlier series on promises. Let's jump in there and get to it. Here's the HTTP function I wrote earlier that fetches the current weather conditions for the city of Boston that's stored in a document in Firestore. It uses the Firebase Admin SDK to access Firestore. It creates a reference to a document in the city's weather collection for the city of Boston. Then it uses the get method on that reference. Remember that git is asynchronous and returns a promise that will become fulfilled when the document snapshot is available. To get a hold of that, it calls the then method on that promise and passes an anonymous callback function which receives the snapshot. The function pulls the data out of the snapshot and sends it to the caller as JSON. Or, if there's an error, the chained catch callback will be invoked. The function passed to catch receives the error object, and that's what's used to send an HTTP error response to the caller. This one is easy to refactor to use async await. First, I need to mark this entire anonymous function passed to on request as async. This will let me use await inside of it. Then I'll create an empty try catch. I'll move the document fetch into it, and I'll use the await keyword to pause my async function until the snapshot is ready. To get that snapshot, all I have to do is use the await keyword before the promise returned by git. Await unwraps the snapshot from the promise, and I can assign it to a constant. Now, I'll move the rest of the code that deals with the snapshot into the try block. And I'll move the code from the old catch callback into the new catch block. And after removing some old code, the refactoring is done. This function was pretty straightforward to refactor to use async await. In my opinion, the code is easier to read now. With async await, there's fewer functions and parentheses to deal with. Now, let's take a look at another function from a prior video. This is a Firestore trigger that fires whenever the Boston City weather document is updated with new weather conditions. When that happens, it takes the updated contents of the document, uses it to build a payload for a notification, and sends it to a Firebase cloud messaging topic for mobile applications to receive. The important thing to remember here is that Firestore triggers need to return a promise to indicate when all the async work is complete. You can see that send to topic returns a promise that becomes fulfilled when the message is sent, and that promise is returned from the function here. So what can we do to refactor this function to use async await? Well, in my opinion, I wouldn't change a thing here. If all you want to do is return a single promise from a function, then just do that. No need to type in extra code. I could mark this function async, then use await to pause it when send to topic completes, but that doesn't really add any value here because I'm not using its results. If the use of async await doesn't improve the readability of your code, just skip it. OK, let's take a look at one more function from a prior video. There's a lot going on in this HTTP function, so I'll go over it real quick. It gets a document from Firestore that has a list of cities in the greater Boston area. For each city in that list, it gets another document that contains the current weather conditions in that city. The promise for each document fetch is collected into an array, and promise.all is used to create a new promise that's fulfilled after all the others are fulfilled. An array of snapshots of documents is delivered to the next then callback, where their data is collected into another array and sent to the client as JSON. To refactor this to use async await, I'll do like before and mark the function async, then create an empty try catch. I'll move the first document get into the try block and use await to unwrap the snapshot from the promise. Then I'll move the rest of the code from the first then callback. Now I've got all these promises collected here and the call to promise.all to combine them into a single promise. Let's talk about that for a moment. Async await provides a syntax for you to express sequences of work, one after another, as you've seen here. But this bit of code is trying to kick off multiple items of work all at the same time, possibly in parallel. 
For situations like this, when you want to wait on pending work represented by multiple promises, async await can't make things any easier for you. You have to keep using promise.all for that. However, you can use await on the promise it returns. Instead of returning that promise to the next then callback, I'll use await here again and capture the resulting array of snapshots in a const. Then I'll move the rest of the code into the try block. And lastly, I'll move the code from the catch callback into the new catch block. And that's it. Async await can be a great way for you to write cleaner code when dealing with promises. Use them where they make sense, but don't feel like you have to. You can expect to see me use them in future videos about cloud functions for Firebase. And to get notified about those videos, you should subscribe right here to the Firebase channel on YouTube. See you next time.